Well, the Kennedy presidency uh, resonates to this day for several reasons. One is because people see him uh, in some ways as a profile in courage. He was a man who was afflicted with a great variety of health problems. In the 1950s, he was hospitalized nine times for 44 days. The public didn't know that, and in fact, there was a cover-up. And if the public had known about the extent of his medical difficulties uh, in 1960, I don't know that he would have been elected because he had to overcome the fact that he was going to be the youngest man ever elected to the office and had to overcome the fact that he was the first Catholic to win the White House. And so his health problems were, uh, could have been a real problem for him in that election. But in retrospect, what people see is a man who was very courageous and had the wherewithal, the stoicism, to deal with these problems despite the endless crises that he seemed to go through in uh, managing, leading his presidency. So I think one legacy of his presidency is a regard for the idea that a president needs to be a, a kind of heroic figure, needs to have a kind of stamina and a kind of uh, courage, because the burdens of that office are unrelenting, and especially in this day and age when you have the 24-7 news cycle, you see. So I think Kennedy comes down to us as someone who is a kind of model of uh, youthful and, uh, and, and courageous and uh, strong, and also wise, because in retrospect, he put before the Congress the uh, Medicare bill, federal aid to education, and most of all, civil rights. And this put his re-election in 1964 in jeopardy. And yet he had the courage to uh, uh, press the Congress to do something that is now written into law forever in this country, you see. And also, he had the wisdom to escape in the Cuban Missile Crisis or help the country and the world escape from a nuclear holocaust. Because we know now we came very close to a nuclear conflict with the Soviet Union. He was absolutely determined not to have to use these weapons, if at all possible. He saw it, as he said, it would be the greatest failure. We can ask, as part of the legacy, what might have happened if he had lived, if he had had a second term? Now, I don't know that he would have the kind of reputation and standing now because every second term president has to deal with a variety of difficulties, problems that are going, uh, that are going for one, uh, to one extent or another, uh, diminish their standing, their reputation. But because he only had the thousand days, you see, we can look back on his presidency as a kind of unfinished administration. If he had lived, there's lots of speculation, and I think with good reason, that he might have achieved some kind of rapprochement with Cuba, and so the long history of Cuban-American alienation would not have occurred. Much more important, there is reasonable speculation that he would have gotten out of Vietnam, or at least never have put those massive numbers of ground troops into Vietnam that Lyndon Johnson did. Of course, we'll never know exactly what he would have done. Uh, I don't know that he knew exactly what he would have done. After he was elected president, Arthur Schlesinger, who had written a book about Nixon and Kissinger during that campaign, during the 60 campaign, and was a good friend of Bobby Kennedy's, Bobby Kennedy said to him, Arthur, how would you like to become an ambassador? And Schlesinger said, no, Bobby, if I do anything, I'd like to be at the White House. And a few days later, Schlesinger saw the president-elect and Kennedy said to him, so Arthur, I hear you're coming to the White House. And Schlesinger said, I am? What will I be doing there? And Kennedy said to him, I don't know, Arthur. I don't even know what I'll be doing there, but you can bet we'll both be busy more than eight hours a day. Many a true word is said in jest. Presidents run for the office. The objective is to win, to knock your opponent down. Do they know exactly what they're going to do? Of course not. Because as Lincoln said, I freely confess that events have done more to shape me than I've done to shape events.